Hi folks, how are you? Sean Ferrick here for Who Culture. In 2022, there are sadly a lot of people involved in the Doctor Who franchise who have left us. Now, in this list, we are going to concentrate on the people who appeared in front of the camera, but I don't want you for one second to believe that we think that anyone behind the camera or adjacent is in any way less important. That's not how we do things here. And another thing I must really stress is that while I understand that the nature of our usual Who Culture videos show rankings, this is not a ranking. We are going to be listing the people in terms of date of death. So, you know, those we lost in January, February and so on. So we wanted to just make it as, as fair as possible in that term. But also we wanted to make sure that we are celebrating everyone. There are so many people on this list who have had such incredible lives. And what is important to us is that we remember their amazing contributions. Before we delve into the actors, I want to take this moment to celebrate those behind the camera that we lost this year. John Brace, Spencer Chapman, Beryl Virtue, Henry Lincoln, Ian D. Tootle, Derek Goodwin, Perry Brahan, Clive Layton, Alan Grant, Tony Dow, Raquel Ebbett, Murren Lane Kelly, Marcus Sedgwick, Shirley Coward, Chris Butcher, M.A.C. Adams, Gavin Burkett, Adrian Hayward, Peter Hales, Lance Andrews, and David Hughes all brought their unique talents and visions to the show and are also sadly missed. Now, we also want to celebrate those people who were involved in the Big Finish productions who also passed away. Stephen Aintree, Leonard Fenton, John Stahl, Ron Pember, Anthony Townsend, Patricia Brake, Bruce Montague, Zalima Dean, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Grief all helped to keep Doctor Who alive in the audio adventures and will be lovingly remembered. We've researched extensively for those we lost in 2022, but if we have missed anyone, please let us know. We want to make sure that everyone is remembered as they deserve to be. Now, please join us in celebrating these lives. Here are 28 actors from Doctor Who who died in 2022. 28, John Hogan. 27, Roger Knott. 26, Deborah Brayshaw. 25, John Raven. 24, Malcolm Rogers. While we wanted to celebrate every name that I've just said out there, we were unfortunately a little bit stuck for the information that we could find. So I would like to take this opportunity. If you knew any of these people, please reach out. We would love to learn more about them. John Hogan passed away in January of 2022. He appeared in two of the second Doctor serials, first being the Tomb of the Cybermen, where he played one of the Cybermen, causing so much annoyance to the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria. He would then return in the Abominable Snowmen, where he played one of the Abominable Snowmen. So he played a Cyberman and he played a Yeti robot. I'm beginning to sense a theme. Roger Knott was born in 1943 and he appeared as an uncredited soldier in the third Doctor serial, The Green Death. He would then return in the sixth Doctor serial, The Twin Dilemma, as a prisoner and he would lend his voice to the old man in the video game, Attack of the Grask. He was an actor and a writer from Cardiff. He passed away in October of 2022. He was 78 years old. Deborah Brayshaw was born in Birmingham in 1946. She appeared in the third Doctor serial, The Day of the Daleks, as Girl Technician. This serial was notable for being the return of the Daleks after a five-year absence and would effectively see the beginning of them being the ongoing villain for the Doctor. It was also notable as being the first Dalek story broadcast in colour. Brayshaw died in October of 2022. She was 76 years old. John Raven appeared as the Savage in the first Doctor serial, The Savages, but also appeared at the end of the Gunfighters scene on the scanner. Now, unfortunately, his appearances in The Savages are currently lost from the BBC archives. Raven began his career acting in the 1950s, though it seemed he left acting in the late 1960s, with the production Let's Go Out being his final credit. Malcolm Rogers appeared in Doctor Who twice, he first appeared in the first Doctor serial, The Chase, and would then return as a policeman in the Daleks' master plan. In 1982, he would appear in Pink Floyd's The Wall. Number 23, John Livesey. 
John Lowsley began his career in 1969, appearing in the second Doctor's final serial, The War Games. He played a German soldier who had been taken by the warlords, but still thought that he was fighting in World War I. Livesey would go on to appear in many other productions, including Threads, the terrifying docudrama of what would happen if a nuclear bomb was detonated in the UK. In 1981, he lent his voice to a radio adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. He played Otho Sackville Baggins, Eothane, and he played a couple of other characters as well. Number 22, George Little. George Villiers Little appeared as Harun Ed Dean in the first Doctor serial, The Crusades. He worked closely with Jacqueline Hill as his character and Barbara Wright formed a close bond after the death of his character's wife and son. In fact, he was able to save Barbara, becoming something of the hero of the piece. Little would have a long career. He would make appearances in Fiddler on the Roof, Poirot and Evita. He would appear on the soundtrack for 1987's Beauty and the Beast, in which he performed This Life is for Me. Music ran in the family as he is the father of violinist Tasman Little. He may perhaps be best known for his performance as Reverend Edward Ruskin on Emmerdale. His first story saw him as the one to whom a murderer confessed his sins, which is a heck of a first day on the job. Little passed away in January of 2022. He was 93 years old. Number 21, Valentine Palmer. Valentine Palmer appeared in the third Doctor serial, Day of the Daleks. He played a guerrilla warrior who would become the leader of the resistance of the humans in the alternate 22nd century Earth. He was instrumental in saving the lives of the third Doctor and Joe Grant. Born in London in 1935, Palmer was a talented musician. He was also an accomplished opera singer and voice coach. He was also the nephew of Charles Herbert Leiterer, who was the second officer on duty on the RMS Titanic the night she sank. He was the most senior member of the crew to survive, and Palmer would go on to write a novel about his uncle, in which he outlined how the tragedy could have been avoided. You see, Lightholder had originally defended his employer's White Star Line, but years later walked back his defence, and several of his suggestions would go on to make travelling at sea an awful lot safer. Palmer actually hadn't seen his performance in Day of the Daleks for years after it aired because just after filming, he whisked away to Mallorca where he started a teaching post. It was actually a fan who had sent him a remastered DVD not long before he died. Number 20, Stephen Churchett. Stephen Churchett played Bill in the sixth Doctor serial, Attack of the Cybermen. Unfortunately, Bill and one of his compatriots ended up becoming shiny new club members in the Cybermen's latest plan. Churchill was born in Bromley in 1947. He would probably be best known as Marcus Christie, the nefarious lawyer who appeared in EastEnders. He was in 70-odd episodes overall, and was actually involved originally in conning Sam Mitchell out of ownership of the Old Vic, working with Den Watts. This earned him the ire of Phil Mitchell, and he went on the run, but did eventually come back to attempt to help Max Branning get off a murder charge. He made an enemy of Phil Mitchell, and came back to Walford. Braver man than I am. Churchill was also known for Secrets and Lie, Marple, and A Bridge Too Far. He passed away on January 11th. He was 74 years old. Number 19, Donald Gee. Donald Gee appeared twice in Doctor Who. First, he appeared in the second Doctor serial, The Space Pirates, and he would return in the third Doctor serial, The Monster of Peloton. Gee was born in Stockport in 1937. He would have the recurring role between 1975 and 1976 as the removal man Bert, the friend to Bob Hoskins' character, who suffered from reading and writing difficulties in the adult education programme on the move. He would then appear twice in Coronation Street. First, he played Inspector Tom Meeker, the health inspector, who became quite a headache for Stan Ogden in 1974. He would then return as the artist Roger, who would become something of a love interest between Mavis and Rita. He would make several appearances in the show Born and Bred as the shopkeeper, Mr. Horace Boynton. He died on January 14th. He was 84 years old. Number 18, Andy Devine. Born Peter Devine, obviously later changing his name to Andy, he appeared in the third Doctor serial, Frontier in Space. Now he played one of the Draconians, a reptilian race that had an empire to rival Earth's own at that point in time. This serial is probably best remembered as the final outing of Roger Delgado's incarnation of the Master. 
This role was one of Divine's earliest, though he will probably be best remembered for the role of Shadrach Dingle on Emmerdale, a role that he played from 2000 until 2010. He would also appear in all 10 episodes of Russell T. Davis' Queer as Folk. Divine passed away on January 27th from pneumonia that he acquired in hospital. He was in hospital recovering from an accidental fall at home. His passing wasn't announced publicly until May. Number 17, Stuart Bevan. Stuart Bevan appeared as Professor Clifford Jones, MBE, in the third Doctor serial, The Green Death. This would serve as then-companion Joe Grant's final appearance in the ongoing series of Doctor Who, as Katie Manning left at the end of this serial. At the time, art reflected life, as Bevan and Manning were an item in real life. Bevan would return to the role of Jones about 30 years later in the spoof mockumentary Global Conspiracy, written by Mark Gattis. Though it was a parody of mockumentary style overall, it actually treated the events of the Green Death quite seriously. Bevan was something of an activist in his real life as well. At the age of 15, he stood up for a Sikh classmate in school, which led to him getting caned. He might be best known for his string of commercials for Fairy Liquid in the 80s or for Kellogg's Corn Flakes in the 90s. He died on February 20th and is survived by his partner, Victoria, and their children. He was 73 years old. Number 16, Linda Barron. Linda Barron, born Lillian Ridgway in 1939, appeared in Doctor Who long before you ever saw her face. She recorded a song for the first Doctor serial, The Gunfighters, called The Ballad of the Last Chance Saloon. That serial was notable as being the final serial that had separate episode names for each part of the serial, and also sparked the end of some of the historical stories that the first Doctor's era was marked by. Baron would appear on screen for the first time alongside the fifth Doctor in the serial Enlightenment. She played Captain Rack, an Eternal, who was blasted into space by the Doctor. She would then return for the eleventh Doctor story, Closing Time, in which she played Val. Her best-known role is that of Nurse Gladys Emmanuel in the long-running Open All Hours comedy series, though she appeared in dozens of other productions as well. She passed away on March 5th. She was 82 years old. Number 15, Kenneth Ives. Kenneth Ives was born in March 1934, and he appeared in the second Doctor serial, The Dominators, as probationer Toba. He was the violent second-in-command of the expedition to Dulcus. He ran afoul of his commander, Rago, and the second Doctor, the latter of whom smuggled a primed bomb aboard his ship. In 1972, Ives moved behind the camera and enjoyed a long career as a director, at one point directing fifth Doctor Peter Davison in All Creatures Great and Small. He successfully moved to directing theatre as well and enjoyed directing Harold Pinter's plays in the 1980s. He died on March 6th. He was 87 years old. Number 14, Peter Bowles. Peter Bowles was born in October 1936 and appeared in the Sarah Jane Adventures as Lionel Carson, an old friend of Sarah Jane's. In the story, The Man Who Never Was, he had once been Sarah Jane's editor and had carried quite a flame for her, although they had never got together. In this story, he helps Clyde and Rani save the day, and all he had to do was break a pen. Bowles trained at RADA and then enjoyed a residency at the Bristol Old Vic. He would appear in many productions, but possibly would be best known for his role as Richard Devere in To The Manor Born, or perhaps as Geoffrey Palmer's replacement as Donald Fairchild in Executive Stress. He would enjoy a long career acting on stage, though he was quoted as saying that the big producers often fell to the big directors and never tended to fall near him. He would later appear alongside Jenna Coleman in the series Victoria as the Duke of Wellington. He died on March 17th. He was 85 years old. Number 13, June Brown. June Brown was born in February 1927 and first appeared alongside the third Doctor in the serial The Time Warrior as Lady Eleanor. This was a pivotal serial for Doctor Who as it revealed the name of the planet the Doctor is from as Gallifrey and introduced the Sontarans to the franchise. Although for Brown, she would say years later, it was great because she earned quite a few residuals from it. Brown is, of course, best known as Dot Cotton, the long-serving operator of the Laundrette and EastEnders. In 2011, she appeared in the skit Dermot and the Doctor as Dot when the TARDIS, attempting to get Dermot O'Leary to the National Television Awards on time, materialised in Walford. Dot was able to walk out and go, that's not the Doctor? Because, of course, she knows what the Doctor looks like. Also, she commented on how often the Doctor keeps bringing his clothes into her Laundrette because he only wears the one thing the whole time. 
Brown has the honour of being the only soap actor to date to carry an entire episode by herself. In 2008, she delivers a monologue into a dictaphone for the entire runtime of the episode. She was nominated for a BAFTA for her performance. Brown was appointed an MBE in 2008 and an OBE in 2022. She died on the 3rd of April. She was 95 years old. Number 12, Jeremy Young. Born John H. Young in Liverpool, 1934, Jeremy appeared in two Doctor Who stories. He appeared in the very first serial, An Unearthly Child, as Cal. He would return to the franchise in the story Mission to the Unknown, which was unique at the time as being the only story not to feature the Doctor or any of their companions. Young would be quite active in theatre throughout his career, having got his start in the Birmingham Repertory Theatre in 1959. He would go on to marry Rani, Kate O'Mara. His career would span many decades, and he would appear in many, many productions. He died on April 9th. He was 88. Number 11, Sonny Caldinas. Sonny Caldinas was born in July 1932 and appeared several times in Doctor Two, quite often as an Iceman. Before going into acting, the six foot four and a half Caldinas began his career as a professional wrestler. He would go on to appear in some of the biggest franchises of all time. First, he appeared as Kra, Scaramanger's head technician in the James Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun. He would then appear as an evil henchman in Raiders of the Lost Ark and would have a small appearance in Luc Besson's The Fifth Element. Caldinas passed away on April 12th. He was 89 years old. Number 10, Anne Davis. Anne Davis appeared in the first Doctor serial, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. Now that serial is most well known for being Caroline Ford's last appearance in an ongoing series as Susan Foreman, the granddaughter of the Doctor. Davis, funnily enough, would get caught up in something of a tug of war behind the scenes. Verity Lambert had originally written the character of Sida, who was being touted as a replacement for Susan in the TARDIS. At the time of writing, the show had been promised that it would be renewed after Ford's departure. However, before the serial went into production, as often happens, salary negotiations came up. There was something of a battle of the wills between William Hartnell, William Russell and Jacqueline Hill and the producers. The producer saying they were charging too much, they didn't want to spend too much, and so they didn't want to pay for a full-time replacement for Carol Ann Ford. Faced with the choice of losing money for the core cast or having a replacement for Ford, Very Lambert capitulated and this role of Sida was rewritten to be a one-shot guest star. Davis herself was close friends with Jacqueline Hill and when Jacqueline Hill passed away, she was interviewed as part of the BBC's tribute to order. While Davis herself would not return to Doctor Who, her daughter, Lucy Briars, would reprise her mother's role in the Big Finish audio. Davis died on April 26th. She was 87 years old. Number 9. Meg Wynne Owen. Born Margaret Shuttleworth in November 1939, Meg Wynne Owen played the part of older Isabella, Abigail's sister, in the 11th Doctor Christmas special, A Christmas Carol. When she was 13 years old, a friend of the family, Ruth Wynne Owen, took over primary care of her, which then led to her decision to incorporate that name as her stage name later in life. She would go on to appear as Lewis in Gosford Park, a production that also starred Kazran Sardik, Michael Gambon. She would appear as Mrs. Reynolds in Pride and Prejudice and as a housekeeper in Scoop. She suffered dementia in the last years of her life and she passed away in June. She was 82 years old. Number 8. Mona Hammond. Born Mavis Chin in January 1931, Mona Hammond appeared in the second season of the revival of Doctor Who. She played Rita Ann Smith, Ricky's grandmother in the alternate universe in the episode Rise of the Cybermen. At the age of 24, she moved to Britain from her native Jamaica, then the British West Indies, having secured a scholarship to RADA. Her first leading role was as Lady Macbeth in Peter Coe's all-black version of the play. In 1985, she, along with Yvonne Brewster, Inigo Espale, and Carmen Munro, founded the Talawa Theatre Company. This would go on to become one of the UK's leading black theatre groups, with many productions focusing on the African diaspora. She would appear in EastEnders as Blossom Jackson, staying in the role for three years. On the big screen, she would go on to appear in Roland Emmerich's 10,000 BC and in Coriolanus. Hammond died on July 4th. 
She was 91 years old. Number seven, Ian Thompson. Ian Thompson was born in August of 1939 and would appear in two of the first Doctor serials, The Chase and The Web Planet. The Web Planet was notable for introducing such creatures as the Zarbi, which were an attempt to create another new merchandising opportunity after Terry Nation's The Daleks. Thompson himself would appear in other such works as the BBC's 1967 adaptation of The War of the Worlds, where he played the third officer. He would have a long career in stage as well, playing many of Shakespeare's characters along the way, and would go on to appear alongside future Dr. Peter Capaldi in Agatha Christie's Murder is Easy. Thompson died on July 16th. He was 82 years old. Number six, David Warner. David Warner was born in July 1941, and although he only appeared on screen in Doctor Who once as Professor Grishenko in the 11th Doctor story Cold War, he had, however, been performing in Big Finish for quite a few years before that. He originated the role of the Unbound Doctor and also appeared in the new 8th Doctor serial Deimos. He played Lord Aslock in the animated serial Dreamland. He was at one time considered for the role of the 7th Doctor before Sylvester McCoy was cast. Warner's career spanned decades. Now, we actually already covered a lot of his contributions to Star Trek in our Trek Culture edition of this list, but actually his contribution to Doctor Who is possibly even greater. He originally went into acting to escape, as he described it, a bit of a messy childhood. He would go on to be the youngest performer ever to play Hamlet, and would appear in so many stage productions throughout his career. He would successfully move into film, playing Jack the Ripper in Nicholas Meyer's Time After Time, and of course played the ill-fated Keith Jennings alongside Gregory Peck in The Omen, something that he described as a career highlight. That film, of course, quite memorably, features former Dr. Patrick Troughton, who gets on the wrong end of a church spire. He was also a voice actor, originating the role of Raish al Ghul in Batman the Animated Series, a role that he reprised several times. He had a commanding presence that, while often led him to being cast as a villain, he was more than capable of playing the good guy as well. He passed away on the 24th of July. He was 80 years old. Number 5. Bernard Cribbins Bernard Cribbins was born in December 1928 and is of course best known as Wilfred Mott, grandfather to Donna Noble. He first appeared in Voyage of the Damned, the Tenth Doctor's Christmas special, which also featured Kylie Minogue, and was then recruited by Russell T. Davis to return as incoming companion Donna Noble's grandfather. He was actually replacing Howard Atfield, who had played Geoffrey Noble, Donna's father, in the previous Christmas special, The Runaway Bride. Cribbins would reprise the role of Wilfred Mott again in The End of Time Parts 1 and 2 and will be appearing in the 60th anniversary specials in 2023. However, Wilfred Mott was far from Bernard Cribbins' first appearance in Doctor Who. In fact, all the way back in 1966, he appeared as a companion to Peter Cushing's Doctor in the Dalek Invasion of Earth 2150 AD, making him the only actor to ever portray a companion in those films and in the main series as well. He was once interviewed by producer Barry Letts as a possible replacement for John Pertwee as the fourth Doctor. However, when asked what he could bring to the role, Cribbins joked that I could fight, and Letts said, oh no, the Doctor doesn't fight at all. And in the very first story, Tom Baker knocked somebody out. Cribbins, of course, lent his voice to the Wombles for years and would be well known for his performance in The Railway Children. At 111 appearances, he holds the record for the most appearances on Jack and Nori. He served in the British Army and was awarded a General Service Medal for his service in Palestine in 1948. He was an OBE and in 2014 was awarded the J.M. Barry Award for lasting contributions to the children's arts. Cribbins died on the 27th of July. He was 93 years of age. Number four, Bill Turnbull. Born William Robert Joylin Turnbull on the 25th of January 1956, Bill Turnbull appeared as himself in the 11th Doctor story The Wedding of River Song, where he interviewed Simon Callow's Charles Dickens. Just go with it. Turnbull had a long career with the BBC as a presenter, reporter and commentator. He was often involved in in-location reporting, such as the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and in the wake of the Cumbria shootings. 
He served as Washington correspondent for several years, covering such historic cases as the O.J. Simpson trial and the scandal that led to the end of Bill Clinton's presidency. Back in the UK, outside of his regular appearances, he was a familiar face on panels and chat shows. He also appeared on Celebrity Mastermind, where his special subject was beekeeping, as he was an author of a book on the subject. He took part in Strictly Come Dancing and finished sixth despite an ankle injury. He revealed his prostate cancer diagnosis in 2018, but continued to present often alongside former wife Shan Williams. He died on the 31st of August. He was 66 years old. Number three, Marcello Magni. Marcello Luigi Giuseppe Magni appeared in Doctor Who only once, though memorably. He played Barney Collins, the coma-stricken local of Ledworth who was imitated by Prisoner Zero. It was in this role that Magni actually got to showcase his decades of experience of theatrics. He was one of the founding members of Complicite, a theatre company that allowed Magni to demonstrate his incredible physical acting. There are hints of this in his ability to imitate the dog in the 11th hour, something that was originally going to be done through CGI work instead. He trained in mime, mask and physical theatre under Jacques Lecoq in Paris, while also showing an aptitude for dramatic roles as well. Through the company, he met, fell in love with, and eventually married, Catherine Hunter, with whom he would continue to act until 2022. The sound of his voice might be very familiar to some people, particularly penguin enthusiasts, as he was the voice of Pingu. He died on September 18th. He was 63 years old. Number two, Jane Sherwin. Born Jane Parsons in 1934, Sherwin appeared in the second Doctor serial, The War Games, as Jennifer Buckingham, a nurse and ambulance operator who assisted the Doctor in forming a resistance against the Warlords. She survived the events of The War Games and was returned to her time and place by the Time Lords. She took the name of her husband, Derek Sherwin, when they married. Sherwin, at the time, was producer of Doctor Who. After she left acting, she moved into charitable endeavours and, for a time, was the coordinator for Central America for the British branch of Amnesty International. She died on December 16th. She was 88. Number 1. Ronan Vibert Ronan Vibert was born in February 1964. He appeared as Nicholas Skinner in the episode The Last Sontaran, one of the Sarah Jane adventures. He also acted in two of the Big Finish serials. Though he was born in Cambridgeshire, he grew up in Penarth, South Wales, and graduated from RADA in 1985. He moved directly onto the stage, appearing in The Snow Queen, Pier Gint and Uncle Vanya, among other productions. Much of his on-screen roles were in period pieces, so he appeared in things like Penny Dreadful, Carnival Row and The Borgias. His role as the mind-controlled Skinner in the Sarah Jane adventures was a bit of a departure. He spent the last days of his life in Florida. He died on December the 22nd at 58 years old. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. We know this has been one of our slightly longer videos, so thanks for sticking with it. If there's anyone at all that you think that we have missed from this list, please let us know and we will do our very best to include them. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. Please, you can follow us on the various social media. You've got Twitter, you've got Instagram, it's at Who Culture and Everything. I'm at Sean Ferrick, and of course, our editor is the wonderful at Dan the Meigs. And of course, there is the lovely Ellie Littlechild as well. Everyone, look after yourselves. Have a very happy new year. Keep it wibbly wobbly. Thanks. <laughs>